What's going on guys? John Alter here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at radio buttons for custom Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at radio buttons for custom Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book. In your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. Get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at radio buttons in custom Kinter. And you can see here we can toggle back and forth between them. Uh, we can click this. Do you like pizza? No, what's wrong with you? Do you like pizza? Yes, of course you do. And we'll set this up to where we can use it with a button like I'm doing here or just click on the actual radio button itself and it will do a thing. And we'll also look at customizing these to make them look all kinds of different ways, change the color, change the width, change the shape, all that good stuff. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this custom kit or series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So we've got a file, I'm calling it ctk underscore radio. It's our basic custom Kinter starter code that we always have. And first off, let's create a quick label. Let's go on my underscore label. And this is gonna be a custom Kinter dot ctk label. And we wanna put this in a root. We want the text to say, I don't know, do you like pizza? Something silly like that. And while we're at it, let's change the font of this, make it a little bigger, easier to read. And let's give this a font of Helvetica and a size 18. Okay, then let's my underscore label dot pack this guy. Let's give it a pad Y of 40 to really push it down the screen. Okay, so anytime you have radio buttons, you're likely gonna have more than one button. So you need to keep track of which one is clicked. And we're gonna do that with a custom Kinter int var or a string var. And these are basically special variables in Kinter that we can use for certain things. So I'm gonna call this, I don't know, radio underscore var. And this is going to equal a custom tkinter dot. Now here's where you want to determine whether you want to use an int var or a string var. Int is for integer, string is for string. So whenever somebody clicks on one of your radio buttons, if you want to keep track of what they've clicked on by using a number, like if we click on the top one, that gets a number one assigned to it. If we click on the second one, that gets a number two assigned to it then you would use an int var. If you wanna use a string instead, so for instance, uh, when you click on the first button, that signifies yes. If you click on the second button, that signifies no. That's a string, characters. So you would use a string var. I think we're gonna use a string var. And I'm gonna set the value equal to um, something else. So let's just call it other. So by default, none of the buttons are selected. So there is no radio variable yet. So we're just gonna set it to other until somebody clicks on it, then we'll assign whatever they've clicked on to this radio variable. So now let's go ahead and create our radio button. So I'm gonna call this my rad one. We're gonna do two of these. So my rad one and my rad two. And this is gonna be a custom Kinter dot CTK radio button. And the R and the B are both capitalized in radio button, as well as the C and the T and CTK. And we wanna put this in root. We want the text to say uh, yes, because, hey, do you like pizza? Yes or no. And then we'll also give this a value of yes. This yes, that's what's gonna get assigned to this radio var variable, this string var, when we click the button. Don't get these two mixed up. So we might say, yes, I do, just to keep this separate, just so we make sure we understand that these are two different things, right? So then we need to set the variable that we're gonna use. So we use the variable, and let me put this on another line because this is getting a little hard to read. And we wanna set this equal to radio underscore var because that's what we named this guy right there. So if you name that variable Bob, you would put Bob here, but we named it radio var, so there we go. So, all right, that looks good. Now let's my underscore, oops, this needs to pop over my underscore rad one dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of like 10, push it down the screen just a little bit. Here, let me comment uh, radio button one. And then let's come down here and create radio button two. And let's just paste this all in here and change this to two. Here for the text, let's say, no, I don't. 
There we go. And this value is going to be no. While we're at it, let's create another label. So let's go my underscore label two. And it's going to be a custom tkinter.ctk label. And we want to put it in root. We want the text to equal nothing for now. And we want the font Helvetica with a size of 18 to make it nice and big. And then uh, it's getting away from me. Let's put some space in here. Let's my underscore label two dot pack this guy, give it a pad Y of 10 or so, push it down the screen a little bit. Now, uh, this label doesn't have anything now, but in the future, when we click on one of these guys, we want this label to do something. So, all right, that's fine for now. Now let's just run this to make sure we've got these set up correctly. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run Python ctk underscore radio dot high. And when we do, we see, do you like pizza? Yes, I do. No, I don't. You'll notice when we hover over them, they kind of change colors. That's cool. If we click on one of them, nothing actually happens, but hey, it's looking good so far. So, all right, so far so good. Now, let's make it to where when we click on one of these things without using a button, something happens. So we could do that. Let's come back here. And I'm going to come up here to the top and I'm going to create a function called get rad, <laughs> something like that. And then let's take this my underscore label two and dot configure it. And we want to set the text equal to what? Well, we want to set this equal to whatever this radio var happens to be. So we call radio underscore var dot get, and that's a function. So now in order to use this get rad, we need to assign it to each of our radio buttons. So we can give this a command of get rad. And we could do the same thing for the other button as well. So command equals, and this is just like a button command, right? So, all right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this and run it, see if that worked. So do you like pizza? Yes, I do. It says yes down there. No, I don't. No. Very cool. Now, what if we want to do this without just clicking this? Because a lot of times you've got a form or something and there's lots of other things in the form you want to fill out and you don't want the form to get executed whenever somebody clicks on a radio button. You just want to sort of determine what they've done and then do something else later on. So in that case, we would use a button. So let's head back over here and let's come down here above our label and let's create a button. So I'm going to call this my underscore button. And this is a custom kinter.ctk button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say select. And we want to give this a command of get underscore rad. So now we can my underscore button dot pack. Give this a pad Y like 10, push down the screen a little bit. Now we need to take off the command for our radio button because we no longer want them to do something when we click the radio button. We want them to do something when we click this regular button down here. So let's go ahead and save this guy. Come back over here, run this guy again. And so, no, I don't. Nothing happens. You see there's no text down here. We can toggle back and forth as much as we want. But until we finally click this button, boom, there it says no. All right, that's cool. Now, just saying yes or no, that's not really all that great down there. You can now write any kind of logic you want, right? So we could come up here to our function and we could say if, and then we can call this guy and we could say if radio underscore var dot get equals yes, then our text would be, of course you like pizza else. And let's just copy this whole thing again. And we can say what's wrong with you. All right, so if we save this and run it, one thing to keep in mind when you're doing something like this, what happens when we don't select anything? It says, what's wrong with you? That's not what we want, right? So if we click yes, it says, of course you like pizza. If we click no, we say, what's wrong with you? But what happens when it's not checked? Well, when it's not checked, the default radio var is other. So we can come up here and we can copy this thing and turn this into an elif and start over again. We could say if radio underscore var dot get equals other, then we could copy and paste this and say something like, please make a selection. So if we save this, I'm back over here, run it. Uh oh, we have two ifs, if, if, <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> All right, there we go. So 
head back over here, clear the screen, get rid of that error. All right. So now when we click this button, it says, please make a selection because we haven't selected one yet. So if we click no, it says, what's wrong with you? Everybody likes pizza. Come on, right? Of course you like pizza. That's how you use the button. That's pretty much all the functionality you can hope to ever have with a radio button. Now let's talk about customizing the look of it. So the slightly wonky thing about this is every time you customize one of these things, you have to customize each of them. So my rad one and my rad two. So that's kind of, you know, annoying. First we can set the width. So let's set the width equal to 50 and the height equal to also 50. Now, the thing about this is, let's put some space here. This isn't the height and width of the button itself. If we save this and run it, you'll notice there's a lot more space around here. It's taking this entire thing and changing the height and width of it, including the text. So sort of think about something surrounding both the radio button and the text. That's the height and width that we've changed here, which that's not great. Most likely don't want to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment that out. If you want to change the height and width of the actual, you know, radio button itself, that is radio underscore width. And so if we set that equal to 50, we can also change the radio underscore height and set that to 50. That's going to get the outcome you're probably more looking for when you, whoops, oh no. It's not radio width and radio height. It's radio button width and radio button height. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save this. Head back over here and run it. <laughs> and now we get this giant 50 by 50 uh, radio button. So, and you'll notice the other one it hasn't changed because like I said, you have to do these for both of them if you want both of them to change size. I'm just gonna do one for this video. You can change both of them later if you want or do whatever you're doing in your program. So, okay, that's the height and width of the actual button itself. That's cool. Now, while we're at it, we can change the corner radius. So let's go corner underscore radius. And I'm gonna set this equal to one. So remember it was a round radio button. I don't know why we call it a radio button. It's a round thing. But now it's a square because we've set the corner radius to one. If you wanna make this into a square, that's how you would do that. Otherwise it's round by default. Cool. What else can we do? Well, we can change the border width. So let's go border underscore width. And there's two border width settings here. You could go border underscore width unchecked and you could go border underscore width checked. So let's set unchecked to like two and let's set checked to like five just to see the difference here. So if we save this and run it. So now unchecked, it's got a border width of two. And you'll notice it's a little skinnier than this round one. Right? Now, if we click it, boom, it gets fatter. It's a border width now of five. If we uncheck it, it goes skinny again. If we check it, it gets a little fatter. You can play around with that, border width checked and unchecked. While we're at it, we can change the border underscore color. So let's set that equal to what? Say red, something just really nice looking. <laughs> it's gonna be obnoxious. And now we see it's got a border color of red. Now, if we hover over it, that's gonna change to a different color. You'll never guess how we change that. We'll do that in a second. But when we click on it, it's no longer red, right? So we'll talk about that in a second too. So first let's do the hover thing. So when we hover, that's gonna be the hover underscore color. So we can set that equal to what, say something really classy like pink. <laughs> All right, so save this, head back over here, run this guy again. So now it's red when we hover, boom, it goes pink. Hover, hover, hover. Still, when we click it, it's dark blue. So how do we change the color that gets clicked? Well, that's gonna be the FG color, and that's short for foreground color, I guess. I don't know why a checked border is called a foreground, but it is. <laughs> so let's call this one green, something like that. Save this guy, head back over here, run it. So now we have red, we have pink hover. When we click it, boom, it turns green. So, all right, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever, we can turn off the hover. Like, see this hover here, woo, ho, woo. Maybe you don't like that. You can turn that off by changing the hover to false. So if we save this and run it. 
Now when we hover over it, nothing happens. When we click it, it changes green. If we unclick it, it changes back. This guy down here still hovers. Yeah, that's cool. What else can we do? We can change the text underscore color. So if I change that to red, and let me change this hover back to true. It's true by default, but yeah, we still want to hover. There we go. Save this guy. So now we've got red text. All right, that's nice. When we click it, still red text. What else can we do with that text? We can change the font and the size. So again, we can use a tuple and call, let's say Helvetica. Change it to any font you want. Let's put it at size 18, make it nice and bigger. Nice and bigger, nice and big. <laughs> whatever. And now we see we've got nice big text of size 18. All right, that's kind of cool. We can just like in almost every widget, we can set the state. So if we wanted to turn this thing off, we could set it to disabled. Now if we do this, obviously nothing happens, right? I can't click it, it doesn't hover, nothing's happening, I'm clicking like crazy, nothing. And you'll notice this text is sort of disabled looking as well. We can change that color of what the text is when it's just disabled, which we're really getting granular here. So let's go text underscore color underscore disabled. And we set that equal to say green. If we save this, head back over here, run this guy again. Now it's still disabled, but the text is green. I'm clicking like crazy, nothing's happening, nothing's hovering, and it's still green. If we come back over here and set the state back to normal, which is just normal, right? And then we come back over here and run this guy. You'll notice the text is no longer green because it's not been disabled, right? So it goes back to the regular text color. All right, so that's pretty much all there is to it. Lots of different ways to customize the look and feel of this. Like I said, the biggest thing is changing it from a, a circle to a square using corner radius. And of course you can play around with your colors and whatnot and the size. Just remember for size, it's not height and width. I mean, it is, but that will change the height and width of everything, which is kind of silly. What you really want is the radio button width and the radio button height to change the actual height and width of the button itself, you know? So other than that, pretty much normal, all the regular actions and things you would think of from Custom Kinter as far as customization goes for this widget as well. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome. Over 150 pages, has all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book. Enter your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.